Hello and welcome to this Follow the Wire video for our OEM customers and partners. In this session, we're going to discuss what a storage area network is, or a SAN, and the role that it plays in the data center, and provide an overview of storage networking basics. Leveraging shared storage arrays is common practice for mission-critical and business-critical workloads to provide high-performance, scalable, secure, and highly available access to storage resources. Now, storage networking refers to the infrastructure components that connect the data center servers and storage systems together. The storage network components include host bus adapters, switches, transceivers, and cables. Now combined, these components provide a dedicated network infrastructure for storage traffic. And this is referred to as a storage area network or a SAN for short. And the SAN delivers optimized IO traffic specifically for storage connectivity. The term SAN fabric is used to describe all these components working together. Why does IO matter in the data center anyway? Well, to summarize quickly, IO matters just as much as the server CPU, the type of memory, and or the storage devices being deployed. Intelligent IO can reduce the burden on the CPU and allow server administrators to use that processing power for other applications and not processing IO. It can also reduce the number of cores consumed and that can reduce software licensing fees for some enterprise applications. In fact, the right I.O. technology can reduce latency of the network and storage traffic and improve the overall system performance. Optimized I.O. technology can deliver low latency quality of service and I.O. virtualization to improve flexibility, scalability, and this is especially true for virtual server or hyper-converged infrastructure environments. When it comes to deploying SAN fabrics, there are two primary protocol transports to choose from, Ethernet and Fiber Channel. Now, both transports can send SCSI or NVMe storage commands from servers to and from storage arrays over a SAN fabric. Now, Ethernet SANs leverage the same networking gear that the server-to-server -server networks use. Uh, you'll see iSCSI today and NVMe over TCP very soon as the storage protocols used in Ethernet SANs. Ethernet can be used for block, file, or object storage applications, making Ethernet a good choice for software-defined storage solutions like vSAN or cloud-native applications that leverage object-based storage. Since Ethernet is not specifically designed and optimized for block storage I.O., Ethernet is generally used for general-purpose block storage application environments where good enough performance is acceptable. Ethernet SANs do provide a variety of bandwidth choices from 10 gigabit Ethernet to 200 gigabit Ethernet today, and they also leverage the existing skill set of the IT networking teams. And this can help reduce the overall TCO as no new skills are required in IT, but this is at the expense of optimal performance and security. There are also several physical connection choices from uh, 10G based T using RJ45 connections to uh, DAC cables or direct attached copper, active uh, optical cables, AOCs, and fiber optic cables with SFP transceivers. Now fiber channel SANs on the other hand are designed for only one thing and that's block storage connectivity. They deliver high performance, low latency I.O. over a secure, highly reliable network. Fiber channel is not used for file or object storage. Fiber channel is available today in 16, 32, and 64 gigabit bandwidths and utilizes only the fiber cables and transceivers for the physical connections. Now, because fiber channel is a different transport and uses specialized HPAs and switches, IT teams do need to be skilled in the fiber channel offerings. And because fiber channel is a dedicated network, it's air gapped from the Ethernet network and less prone to hacking or cyber threats as well. Traditionally, the storage network was rarely an issue in terms of overall system performance. You see, servers and storage devices were typically the slowest devices in the chain, and the network had plenty of headroom. However, with advances in server processor and storage technologies, network capability now needs to be a key part of the system equation to avoid potential bottlenecks in performance. Storage network bandwidth, input-output processes per second, or IOPS, 
and latency all become critical factors in the ability for customers to reap the benefits of new server and storage technology that they might be considering. Now, bandwidth is effectively the size of the pipe. It determines the maximum rate at which data can be transferred between devices. IOPS is a measure of the maximum number of transactions that can occur per second. It's directly related to bandwidth in that the higher the bandwidth, the more transactions you can do. Now, latency is a response time for a transaction. How long does it take for a command sent from one end of the network to get to the other? Now, unfortunately, manufacturers play numbers wars with these parameters that can mislead your customers, especially in the case of IOPS and latency. These figures are dependent on many different factors, including the uh, application that's running, the operating system overhead, all the elements within the network fabric itself, and the storage array performance. Data sheet figures are typically only achieved in the lab under ideal test conditions, and are rarely can they be achieved in the real-world implementations. Connectivity needs to be optimized, and that means a balance between IOPS, bandwidth, and latency. And there's no specific formula here. As mentioned earlier, you can't always rely on the data sheet figures, as many don't reflect the real-world environment. Now, having said that, here are some basic guidelines you can use. If you're talking to a customer or considering using current high-performance virtualized servers with block storage applications and or flash memory or NVMe storage, then you must look at 10 or 25 gigabit Ethernet I.O. for iSCSI or NVMe over TCP connectivity. For fiber channel, you need to leverage enhanced 16 gig, 32 gig, and 64 gigabit fiber channel for your SAN environment. These latest generation I.O. technologies offer a variety of new capabilities that are not found in legacy technologies like 1 gigabit Ethernet or 8 gigabit fiber channel. When deploying block storage solutions like hybrid or all flash storage arrays, there are some best practices to keep in mind for the SAN design. First, use a dedicated storage network. This is especially important if you're looking to use Ethernet for iSCSI or NVMe over TCP connectivity. Sharing the switching and host adapter infrastructure with the standard network will not deliver optimal storage performance. Server-to-server -server networking issues can significantly impact the server-to-storage network performance if they're on the same network infrastructure. Now, second is that the storage network should always be deployed with a dual path architecture for high availability. This means two of everything, minimum of two controllers in the storage arrays, switches deployed in pairs, and dual port or a pair of single port host adapters. To optimize storage performance and improve the efficiency of the host server CPU, always use adapters that support IO offload. All fiber channel adapters are fully offloaded, and if you're using Ethernet, consider using a converged network adapter with iSCSI hardware offload or use RDMA-enabled NICs uh, for NVMe storage. If Ethernet is the fabric of choice, make sure you use a lossless Ethernet configuration to maximize storage performance. Now, this means enabling features like data center bridging, priority flow control, and enhanced transmission selection. Be aware, however, that this makes for a much more complex network configuration and can really limit the scalability of your uh, SAN fabric to no more than two hops. Now, for more information on the differences between Ethernet and Fiber Channel SAN capabilities, be sure to watch our Follow the Wire video titled Fiber Channel or Ethernet, which SAN do I choose? Well, that's it for the basics of storage area networks. Let's look at the key takeaways. Storage area networks or SANs are dedicated networks used for connecting servers and shared storage arrays to one another. SANs are typically deployed using either Ethernet or fiber channel as the transport and fabric technology. Ethernet SANs are best when using file or object storage or when there is a requirement for to mix file, object, and storage. Fiber channel SANs are the best solution for block storage applications as fiber channel will deliver more consistent SAN performance at scale, improve CPU efficiency, and is much more secure than Ethernet networks. 
For more information, go to www.marvell.com slash QLogic to find out more information on Marvell and QLogic Fiber Channel HPA technology. And be sure to check out our other Follow the Wire videos on the Marvell YouTube channel. Thanks and have a wonderful rest of your day.